Like many people, I love watching home renovation shows. I always love watching the befores and afters, especially when there is such a drastic improvement to the original space. But not all home renovation shows are made equal. Sometimes there are designers that completely miss the mark and other times the workmanship just isn't there. But you know what stings a little bit more? When you know your neighbor is involved. And today we are going to be watching a TV show that does all of these combined, and that is Trading Spaces. Trading Spaces was an American television show produced by TLC, so you know there's going to be drama. They had two sets of neighbors that would decorate one room each in each other's homes, and they could not decide what would go in it. These two teams would end up having two days and a thousand US dollars to do it, with the assistance of an interior designer. So you would think that with an interior designer, it would have come out all right. But for whatever reason, you might have been better off never having an interior designer because some of these spaces are horrendous. It's really fascinating because sometimes it would seem like one team would do really well and make this beautiful space for their neighbors. And then the other team must have had some petty issue with them. So they were just like, Susie didn't mow her lawn frequently enough. I'm gonna ruin her living room. It just, it was weird. It's really weird. Hi, Casey. Hi, Bob. How are you? Hi, Bob. I'll be working hard tomorrow. <laughs> we said that. Come on in, guys. You might uh, not like the partitions, but we liked them. I'm sure you do. You wanna help me take them down? <laughs> no. <laughs> and you know what's worse than having a neighbor that wants to destroy your home on purpose? An interior designer that wants to destroy your home on purpose. Watch me. It certainly seemed like the producers or the designers knew ahead of time that Susie over here doesn't like brown, doesn't like modern, and doesn't want anyone touching her fireplace. You know what we should do? We should do all three and see what her reaction is. It's really unfortunate because it looks like the teams actually knew that they shouldn't do the thing that they were meant to do, and then they ended up doing it anyway. Do you see how more amazing the ceiling is? Hell no. <laughs> the reveal is honestly like the most heartbreaking thing to watch. Open your eyes and see your new family room. Wow. Well. <laughs> it's different. The big question is what do you think about the fireplace? You guys are going to be fixing that in a little bit. Hmm. I'm gonna have to leave the room now. You're that disappointed. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> Boy, she's not happy. Is there anything that you can see in the room to fix certain elements of it to make it better for the two of you? I don't even know where to start. Oh, it looks really good. <laughs> And, and your room is, everything is reversible. <laughs> they had an adverse reaction. Yeah, well, no. we were afraid of that. So why didn't you say anything? <laughs> they did. They, they, they did. protected we your did. fireplace. It's under We there. totally did. Nothing is touching that whatsoever. Do you like yours? Yes. Yeah, yeah it looks yes. great. See what I mean? The neighbors were just a bit weird, especially in the interaction. It was like they knew that they weren't going to like it, but had obviously done it anyway. Mind you, this was probably one of the milder room reveals. Obviously there was quite a strong reaction because the woman did not like anything in the space. But in terms of the design itself, it's actually really mild. Some of the worst room reveals in trading spaces all had one common denominator, and that was a woman named Hildy. Hildy Santo Thomas was by far the worst designer on Trading Spaces and honestly, in my opinion, probably the worst designer I have ever seen. She had this really weird habit of taking risks. When she meant risks, she pretty much meant making sure she destroyed the homeowner's space as much as physically possible. She didn't seem to have a concept as to what would make a space functional or how things would go together. She certainly seemed to be on the show for shock value because honestly, these rooms are shocking and I am surprised that she had a job so long. Open your eyes and see what it looks like. Oh my God. Oh, oh Baduda, this is great. Yeah, well, it's pink. <laughs> That's the first thing you noticed was yeah. the ceiling. Yeah. Wow. It's not a kid room. You the wall lighting. is a little bit funky. I'm not sure about the straw actually here. Okay. I'm glad yeah. you could tell it was straw because we is straw. weren't sure you'd even know for sure what it was. It's straw. It's straw. It's straw. It's a form okay. with pink. 
I said I really didn't want a kid room, but, you know, I'm going to be cleaning up straw for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I'm sure you guys are wondering by now why, why in the world would someone think super gluing straw onto a wall would be a good design choice? And we're going to read an article in a second that kind of discusses this further, but Hilary's kind of perception is that, you know, she wanted to make the space feel adult, not in a way that's actually livable. I would have actually been happy with her doing modern farmhouse, and you guys know how I feel about modern farmhouse. But I think the worst part is, is is when the neighbors come in and they just love their space and they're stuck with this. <laughs> I love my kitchen, you guys. I cried. Yeah. I cried. This is what's gonna happen. I know. Yeah. <laughs> mommy, mommy, mommy. Okay. And here's the thing that I hate is that they knew this was a bad idea and the woman is actually an interior designer herself. So she knew better than what Hildy was doing, yet she went ahead with it anyway. They have a baby in a toddler. Well, but, what do you mean? Uh, well, they might pick it up. Well, they need to be told not to, I mean. <laughs> Obviously, I'm more mad at Hildy because she is a designer, she's a professional here, she's meant to know what she's doing. Putting hay on the wall, even if you didn't have kids in the space, would still be a bad idea. It molds quickly, it's going to be there freaking forever as well, and it's something that's just going to degrade. It didn't even look nice. Like, if it looked nice, I'd be like, okay, I can see where she was kind of going with it, but it doesn't even look nice. Like. My blood pressure's going up, I need to chill out a little bit. We were going to have a trading spaces party and reveal our rooms to our friends. We're not doing that. Wish her up, a diehard fan of the show and an interior designer, originally thought she and Mike might have a say in the design as the show sometimes makes it appear. But the concepts are done in advance and the materials are purchased in advance so each neighbor is reduced primarily to worker bee status, although they can try their best to steer the process. Which I think is so sad because they came onto the show assuming that they would be able to utilize their own skills. Like, especially with this woman, could you imagine if she was allowed to have just that thousand dollars and just have rain? She would have done, I would assume, a much better job, and I knew the bars down here, than what Hildy has done. The homeowners have no control. They want us to say what we like or not, but it's all their concept. I guess they want the shock factor. I did not say, I think my neighbor would like hay and straw on the walls. Girl, if you did, that would have been wild. <laughs> Rhea Wisherup said she brought up the fact that their neighbor's living room was a health and safety hazard. Kilstrom and Hoover had asked Trading Spaces to make their living room more adult. Were they mocking us? Kilstrom asked. They made a room that's hazardous to kids. Which I think is a huge thing as well. Of course, as an interior designer, you need to really be thinking about what is a safety concern or not, especially when a client has children. And Hilary obviously did none of this for whatever reason. Honestly, just reading that breaks my heart because it does not surprise me at all that, you know, we often see this with reality TV, like, you know, they kind of give up this facade that's kind of like, yeah, we're here to help you guys. We're here to make sure that you have a beautiful home. And mind you, this is not the only TV show that's doing it. It's even further than just design shows. It's also with weight loss shows and anything that is classified as reality TV is obviously not reality TV. And look, the thing that I hate the most about with what Hildy has done is that she has no remorse. And mind you, there's another article that actually quotes someone saying that they had definitely had an issue where they had to put the designer into a car quickly before they were murdered because they had to put a hit on them. I do not blame anyone. I really do not. Like, your home is meant to be your safe space. It's meant to be something that you can come home to at the end of the day and feel relaxed in, especially in this example. Like, I don't know if these guys are the ones that put the hit on her. There are so many issues with even just this space. Mind you, we haven't even looked at the other spaces yet. We haven't even looked at our other designs yet. I'm not even surprised that someone was like, you know what, this woman needs to pay. Albeit, we do not know that it was specifically her, but I would not be surprised because, I mean, look at it. The straw was a great idea. A lot of things must be put into the correct perspective. It really was very cool. It was just, they didn't like it. By the way, there's more. So she also had a horror themed kitchen where she had a literal crime scene on the wall. And no, I'm not saying that as a saying. It literally was a crime. Uh, it was a crime to design as well, to be honest with you. <laughs> she also did a huge self portrait in someone's dining room 
of herself. If you're going to be that self-centered, at least like put one of the homemade owners next to you and be like, yeah, it was kind of like to resemble our time together. No, she literally just did a cartoon version of herself and went smack bang, perfect. Like who? She did a black and white room as well for a couple that had asked for color. It literally looks like an asylum. And she went, you know what? We're gonna give you white and you're gonna be happy about it. And one of her messiest rooms, aside from the straw room, because of course we've discussed that in depth, is the circus room or the beach room. I don't even know what to call it. It looks like a circus tent. She put sand inside and then had this circus drapery all around. I, like this one is horrible. I would almost argue that this one was worse than the straw one because we all know how hard it is to get rid of sand from our toes after we go to the beach. Imagine that in your house. And this is only one room in the house. It would have gone everywhere in the house. And then when you're trying to remove it, there will still be some somewhere. What is this woman on? Like she's on some strong stuff <laughs> when she's doing these designs. This flower one is probably the only design that I actually semi like from her. And honestly, it just needed a couple of bits of tweaking for it to actually have come out as a good design. Number one, don't put it in a bathroom. There's going to probably be mold and it's going to probably mess with the flowers. And even just the dust would have been annoying. But if we wanted to do a flower wall in our home, I would almost argue this needs to be in a different space that isn't a wet room or shouldn't be a wet room. The flowers should be a more consistent color palette because a lot of the time when you add in this many colors, it's just too much on the eyes that's too busy. However, there are a lot of spaces like hair salons that will do something like this and it comes out a lot nicer because what they do is they stick with one color, they allow that to be the feature with the texture rather than the color and the texture. If she had made the color palette a little less garish, it probably could have come out quite nice. Impractical, but could have been nice. Honestly, I don't even blame the contestants for getting so upset with her. Open your eyes and see your new room. What the f What? Hell to the no. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, Hildy is obviously a terrible designer. I think we can all attest to that. But Paige, the host of the show, has a really interesting way of talking about it. And it kind of explains how so many of these homes ended up the way they did. You're basically there to please the client, right? We are. Mm -hmm. but well, we are, I have a different oh, feeling boy. about that. <laughs> you know, on trading spaces, it, it's, it is different than, than the redos that you do here on The Oprah Show. I mean, you really are taking a risk when you go on, the, on trading spaces. You are trading with your neighbors and you have no say in what goes on in that house. And the idea, hopefully, is that you will stretch yourself outside of I your still, box. I'm always shocked. Of course, there is going to be some level of risk when you're handing over the reins to designing your home, especially if someone doesn't know you very well. But I don't think very many contestants would have expected there to be hay on the walls, just saying. This certainly does beg the question as to whether or not this is an ethical practice or not. Even extreme home makeovers ended up putting people in worse financial situations than before. It would end up skyrocketing their property taxes and exponentially building up their bills that most of these people were not able to pay for it and they ended up either losing the home or having to sell. Thankfully, Trading Spaces doesn't take it to that extent because it is only one room, but can you imagine if Hildy had had the reins to design an entire house. I kind of want to see that, but I also don't think there'd be a house to show. If you do want to change up your home, there are a lot of ways to do it when you're on a tight budget without completely breaking the bank. Personally, I love adding in lots of plants. Of course, I am also the demographic to want to add in a lot of plants. You can also add in a rug and the rug can be the way that you can pull colors from. So usually a rug will have multiple colors, especially like an oriental rug. So let's say it had red, blue, and yellow in it. You can then pull those colors out and put that into the rest of the space and that'll make it feel more cozy. It'll make it feel a little bit more inviting and a little bit more put together as well. And finally, I love shopping secondhand. I love going to Savers and all the other like antique vintage places because you end up finding really unique pieces that are a lot more you than what you would find at Kmart or like Trader Joe's? No, 
I don't know where you Americans shop, but uh, Wayfair. Wayfair. <laughs> Yes, these home renovation shows can be very entertaining to watch, but when you're at the mercy of someone like Hildy, do you really want someone like that designing your home? I personally would not. But speaking about room transformations and home design, I was thinking about starting a mini series where I help you guys have like a little home design audit where we discuss your home and how we can make a specific room better. Let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in and thank you guys for watching. That's about it and I will see you on our next internet adventure. When somebody says, oh, you can't do that. I'm like, really? Watch me.